All right, can everyone see the screen? Yes. But tell me what you see. Um, migration history. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. All right, so we're going to go into when you get your DNA tests or tests, because it probably will take more than just one, because there's a lot of information which that is being hidden even through the test. So you have to get various tests in order to figure out what exactly is going on in your DNA, who you are, your ancestry, as well as also the origin of the ethnicity and the haplo groups. So what I'm going to show you today is essentially those sciences. So here we have, of course, what we refer to as the Bering Strait. It is alleged that we get most of our ancestry as far as being Native American was through those who came through the Bering Strait, which was a ice a glacial wall that extended across Europe almost to moderate nights retreat and these populations moved back north at the end of the last ice age Europe was occupied by hunting and gathering population which extended out to West Asia 15,000 years ago after the last glacial maxima these people were concentrated in the peninsula of the southern Europe, such as Iberia, because they remain relatively um, relatively hab habitable even during the coldest phases within warming climate and expanding forests, the hunter-gatherers migrated northward following their game in Scandinavia and in Northeast Europe. They encountered other groups of hunter-gatherers producing a hybrid culture. Now, allegedly the hybrid culture is what we now refer to as the Native Americans, as of course as they come from out of Mongolia, Mongolia, Mongolia uh, Russia area on up into um, um, well, this is just showing you the, the migration period but of course we you know coming out from um, Mongolia Russia on up into the Bering Strait um, into Alaska and then allegedly coming down into North America and then into Central and South America now this is what they tell us that this happened approximately 10,000 years ago after the last ice age. Now, let's look at this. I've gone to anthro ancestry patterns. This is your genetic admixture. So population, this is the African ancestry. As you see down Near the bottom, I have it highlighted, African-Caribbean in Barbados. Um, actually, it's not just in Barbados. It's throughout the whole Caribbean, technically. We're talking about Puerto Rico. We're talking about Barbados. We're talking about St. Kitts um, and Nevis. We're talking about the Bahamas. We're talking about Jamaica, uh, the Bermuda Islands as well as other areas in the Caribbean. We have people with African ancestry in Southwest United States of America. So that African ancestry in Southwest United States of America, they are saying that that is African ancestry. Now, this is where it gets into the fact that I do have American or American ancestry because we're talking about North, Central, South America, and the Jordan Islands, once again, but in particular, um, South America, and it says Colombian, and Medellin, Colombia, 
people with Mexican ancestry in Los Angeles, California, United States of America. So that means under Khalifa, there are those who are of African, that's what they allege, but as we see here, it's not African, it's actually Mexican ancestry. Those who were under Khalifa, and as we see um, pictures of Khalifa, we know how she looks, as she was an Amazon, um, and she was, even according to various pictures shown in Los Angeles, shown in California of Khalifa, we know her ancestry, all right? Um, it's Omeka. So this Mexican ancestry is talking about particularly Omecan, Peruvian, in Lima, Peru, and Puerto Rico, or Puerto Rican in Puerto Rico. So these are the Native American parts of ancestry. At least these are part of the which that was shown through this ancestry patterns of anthro DNA. Now, we come further down, it says, this is you. Um, as you see, African, and then as you see, American. So you see quite a bit of American, which is in green, where it says, this is you. All right? For those who do not have American or indigenous American ancestry, then it would be no green. All right? Here, it says below, you can see an expanded comparison between your sample and the most similar region. Now, as you see, I'm less African than the reference population, which would be African. But I am more American than the reference population. All right, 8.3%. Now, Oprah Winfrey had 8% Native American ancestry when she was on um, the TV show with Henry Lewis Skip Gates, who loved to skip over quite a bit of information, but he had to inform her that she had 8% Native American ancestry. And it was as if she was the only one out of all of the people that he has interviewed and have done the DNA test for that she was the only one in which she had African ancestry. Now, isn't that something? Well, here it states that I have, as you see, the color green, this is the green here. You are more American than your reference population. 8.3%. Now, we come down. And I had to get this from various DNA sites because um, you have to keep searching. All right. Now, this is my ancestry, or excuse me, my, my heritage, um, another DNA site. And as you can see here, I put in Native American, and these are the various areas in which that shown up. Argentina, Bahamas, Barbados, which we always talked about the Barbados. This is, so this is another website that's verifying the anthro DNA website. This is my heritage website. Uh, website, DNA website now. The Bahamas or Bermuda, as you see here, Brazil, Canada, Chile, Colombia, as we already seen, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic, which is also is Haiti, which they don't know why they don't have that highlighted because Dominican Republic and Haiti is right there, the same island. Um, Ecuador, Jamaica, Mexico, as we already seen, Panama, Peru, Puerto Rico, as we already seen, um, Trinidad and Tobago, um, of course, USA, um, um, Uruguay, and uh, Venezuela. Now, this is 
or my American ancestry from the various areas in the Americas. This is being verified, being verified through um, Anthro DNA website and now my heritage website. So as you see here, uh, we click on Native American. It says Native American, and it has basically the whole area of North America. And one of the areas in which that's shown up was 17% Lumbee Indian, right? Lumbee derivative, 4.3 or 4.35%, um, which is 17% Lumbee. Now, we come down, who is Lum Lumbee? Well, history, Lumbee are a Native American tribe. Okay, recognized in the state of North Carolina. Now, that ends all discussion about if we have Native American blood. This is being verified through DNA now. So those in which that are trolls can't just come on and state otherwise because they love to say, oh, you just African. Well, hold up. Obviously, I'm not just African if I have all this Native American blood in me and they verify through DNA that I am Native. The name Lumbee is derived from the word lumber or lumber river, which winds, winds through Robeson County, North Carolina. The river was named for the extensive lumber trade in the region in the early 19th century. The area of North Carolina today called the home by the Lumbees of Robinson County until 1787. It was part of Bladen County. Now, my adopted family is from Bladen County. That's where I grew up part of my life at was in Bladen County. Elizabethtown, Kelly area, which is only a half an hour or so away from, and t well, 12 minutes or a half an hour away from Lumberton from the Lumbee area. When North Carolina Governor Matthew Rowan dispatched surveying parties in 1753 to count Indians in the state, the report stated there was no Indians in the county. So as you see, they attempt to denationalize. However, in the first federal census of 1790, the ancestors of Lumbees were among those enumerated as free peoples or persons of color, Moors. In the 1870 census, the first in which Indians were a separate category, almost all Robinson County residents with surnames since associated as Lumbee were classified as mulatto. All right, once again, Moors, Native Americans, all right? In 1885, the politician Hamilton Macmillan proposed a theory that the Lumbees were the descendants of the England's lost colony, all right? The Roanoke colony, who intermarried with the Hatteret, which Croatan, and Algonquin-speaking people. The state legislator accepted Macmillan's proposal, identifying traditionally free people of color in Robeson County as Indian in 1885 after the Reconstruction era. The lost colony legend suggests that the entire Lumbee population grew out of intermarriage between the surveyors or survivors, excuse me, of the 121 stranded colonists colonialists, excuse me, and the uh, Hatterat Croatan Indians. This assertion has not been supported by mainstream historians or anthropologists. After 1885, recognition of the state of North Carolina as Croatan Indians, the Lumbees unsuccessfully sought federal recognition thereafter. In 1952, after a request found tribal members, the Robeson County Commissioner conducted a tribal Referendum on the Indian name. Tribal members voted for adoption of the name Lumbee Indians of North Carolina. The Lumbees claim to be descendants of the Choro 
and related Suan speaking tribes originally inhabited parts of the coastal region of the state of North Carolina. Some members claim to be descendants of the Algonquin speaking Tuscarora tribe, who before 1722 inhabited northeastern North Carolina. All of this is true. So we're talking about the Tuscarora, which became part of the Iroquois Confederation, as well as the uh, um, the Churro, which actually expands all the way down into South Carolina. In 1956, the United States Congress passed HR or House Resolution for um, 656, known as the Lumbee Act, which recognized the Lumbees as Native American people, but did not recognize them as an official tribe. In consolation with the tribe as a condition of recognition, Congress excluded the Lummies from receiving the federal services originally or ordinarily provided to federal recognized tribes because the Bureau of Indian Affairs. As the only tribe in this circumstance, the Lummies have since sought federal uh, for federal recognition through congressional legislation. Now, that's just one part of the Native American ancestry, but I had to get it in. So uh, we continue on. Um, here we have um, indigenous Amazonian, uh, Amazonian, all right, which is South American. Yes, I have South American ancestry, Native American. And this is the area, um, as we see here, we see parts of Brazil, we see parts of Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, Guyana, um, Suriname, all these areas here, all right? Also, Mesoamerican and Andean, all right, from the Andes ethnicity. Once again, South American ancestry. And we talking about these same areas again, Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, Chile, Guatemala. Now we're talking about. All right. All along this strip here on up into Central America, into the Panama, all right? Now, these are the areas in Peru in which that genetically I connected to was De Lima, all right? Um, Cicado De Lima. Equipto. San Martin, all right? You can see the percentages here. These are the top places my ancestry was during the 1900s to 1950s, all right? In San Martin, we had Muyo Bamba, Toro Porto. Um, we had La Libertad, all right? Um, Chojolio. Uh, Kama America. Uh oh, there it is. America. Kojo America. Uh oh. We've taught on that many times before about that there in Peru um, area, the Peruvian area, is where we get the origin of the name America from. And here it is. Part of my ancestry is right there in um, Kojo America. So, this is where we're talking about here to the right on the picture. As you can see, the darker areas or the areas in which they have become our ancestry. So you have to go to various sites in order to get a much clearer understanding and understanding of your indigenous ship. You can't stay at one site. All right? The various names within these areas in which that um, of my ancestry is Garcia, Lopez, Rodriguez, um, Rojas, 
and Vargas. All right. So now we go to um, Geno Genome Link. Genome Link. All right. And this is what they said about the indigenous Americans. The first people to occupy the New World were also the descendants of some of the first humans to venture north into Siberia. But their culture originated, um, orinated, orin, um, orinated towards big game. These people naturally moved eastward and across territory which today is under the ocean due to the rise of sea levels. In this manner, indigenous American people are actually the scions of the lost continent of the Ice Age. All right, physical characteristics. All right, once in the new continent, these people spread rapidly, making use of their mobile um, foraging um, and hunting strategies. Foraging and hunting strategies. The ancient site of Monte Verdes in Chile attests to the fact that it took only a few thousand years for humans to range across both continents. Just as in Eurasia, their lifestyle was geared towards hunting and gathering. But just as in Eurasia and Ocea, after the Ice Age, some of these hunters and gatherers settled down, eventually developing their own form of agriculture independently. Corn in Mesoamerica and potatoes in the highland of South America. But not all mysteries are solved. Geneticists have determined that some of the people in the remote um, Amazonia are somewhat different from other indigenous populations. They show evidence in their genome of descent from a people most closely related to the people of Papua New Guinea and Australia and mainland East Asians. This is still more to learn. So, Papua New Guinea and Australia. Now we know this for a fact, all right? And we'll come down and read on that. Papua New Guinea and Australia. All right. Once again, Papua New Guinea and Australia. So let's look at this because this is something to which that isn't quite overstood yet. So within my ancestry, I have Papua New Guinea and, as we just seen, Australia. That is also part of those who went into what we now refer to as South America on the Peruvian side. So we have some facts in which that correlates to some of this. So right here, leaving South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear, leaving South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear, once again, leaving South America, Dr. Albert Goodyear in South Carolina, University professor say humans lived along the east bank of the Savannah River 50,000 years ago. Now, he was leaving South America, and he comes back into North America, and he's there talking about Savannah, the Savannah River, which is in Georgia, well, South Carolina, um, outside of Georgia. It says the 51,700-year-old North American site found in Allendale County, South Carolina, but the Savannah River is less than 30 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. Showing Goodyear holding a flint work by human hands at the 51,700 year old level. This is the picture here to the left. The evidence for this ancient African migration came in multiple forms. Skulls and skeletons, footprints and lava, campsite, genetic M174. Remember that, M174. Remember that, M174 and D haplogroups. Once again, 
M174 and D haplogroups. D haplogroups. And he's saying that these are African migrations. But we're going to show even more information concerning these D haplogroups and M174 because D haplogroup is normally considered a Native American haplogroup. But he's saying that ancient African migration. Which one is it? Linguistics, paintings, carvings, well, I'll just tell you now, is is both. Linguistics, paintings, carving, architecture, Egyptian writing, Egyptians with D haplogroup and M one seven four haplogroup. Now M uh that is uh, maternal or matriarchal um, haplogroup and Y DNA um, is D haplogroup alright if I'm not mistaken here so here it is Egyptian writing artifacts and instructions this data exposed the false premise that the first Americans came from Asia once and for all so here Euro Albion's white archaeologists such as Josh Reeves, Ross Hamilton, and I personally know Ross Hamilton. Um, he was over the site um, at the Serpent Mounds in Ohio, in Adams um, Adams County. All right, um, I bought several of his books from him. He signed them. Um, we was there for several days with him. Um, getting the instructions. In fact, he allowed for our group of Washita, um, United Washita, um, to go down into uh, off a cliff area in order to activate a crystal, uh, a crystallized um, granite crystal granite area, in which that he believed was attached to. Um, some type of UFO or IFO structure in which that would have been under the mound itself. Then we have Jim Rivera, etc. have already revealed that the first Americans were native indigenous black aboriginals. All right, now we know the term aboriginal was used because we just talked about Australia. Australia has aborigines. Who built ancient mounds, ancient uh, advanced civilizations, stone rock sculptures, and indulged in the high science of star observation, earth consciousness, nature-based living, cosmo cosmological admiration, mathematical computations, time ref uh, reverence, etc. So called black people in North America are natural descendants of these great spirit walking ancestors. You are what your ancient forefathers were. And so I'm proving to you that not only do we have historical value and significance to the Americas, but we have genetic ancestry that ties us back to America as well. And I'm proving this. So this will shut up um, um, those. Who say that they are just that they are the Native Americans by themselves and this is not true here it is we are not just Africans the black Native Americans by Clyde Winters this is what he says the black Native Americans DNA of North America was mainly descended of the Paleo Americans and Africans who sailed to the Americas between 12,000 BC 12,000 BC. Now, that would go back to 14,000 years ago. To 1492 AD. The ancient skeletons of North America are the Ascat boy and the Kennewick man. Now, the Kennewick man, I'll show you. My ancestry ties right back to the Kennewick man that he's talking about, and so do many of yours. In fact, most of those in which that 
deal with this indigenous Aboriginal information have the same ancestry. And this is why it was being awakened within us. The ancestors are speaking. This paleo American belonged to the Colvis culture, the same as the Kinnewick, um, Kinnewick man. The Ansic boy belongs to mitochondrial DNA M or D1. Now these are the same ones that we just talked about that was found. And, hold on, and Y chromosome R1. I D Y DNA R1. The male lineage R1 was also carried by the first Europeans. What's Ishmael or Ushem? Ishem, man in Siberia and the Malta boy in the Western Eurasia. Both Ustel Ishem, Ushastem and Malta belong to the empty DNA haplogroup U. The Europeans called the people they found in the Americas. Indians because when they met these population it was very dark skinned like the Dravidians or black people of South India. Although the cowboy movement popularized the image of the Native Americans as mongoloid Indians like the Apaches and other groups at Americans fought in the late 1800s, the usual symbol of American Indians were the black Native Americans who looked exactly like Africans except for the straight hair. All right? And here it is, is verification. This is taken from the Muse McCord Museum. As you see here, these are the five groups of people upon planet Earth recognizable. You have the Mongolian, which is the Mongoloid. You have the Caucasian, which is the um, Xanthro um, Crocric. You have the African, which is the Negroid. And you have the Malaysian, which is the Malayno um, um, Conoroic. And then you have the American, who is what? The Astroloid. The American is the Astroloid. Now, the American look just like, oh, here we go. Native Americans and Australian Aborigines were 100% O positive blood type before colonization. 47% or more of so-called African Americans are O positive blood type We'll just let that sink in for a second. All right? And we're going to show you, as you see here, that Australia looks identical to Brother Shannon. Look at the features. Damn near identical. Matter of fact, we can say that he are, he, this is his latest incarnation. Okay? As you can see, it looked like it's, this is some of his latest incarnation. That's Brother Shannon, 100%. So, so-called black Americans are not Indians, but Aborigines. This Alabama Senator Scott Beasel, Beeson is 100% right. As the native Mongoloids came to America after our ancestors. So we was already here, and when they came, we mixed in in order to form the rest of the said Native American tribes. But prior to that, we was already here. All right? All of the present day archaeologists and anthropologists agrees, at least those in which that have come out and have written books and have and different other pamphlets and done videos and so forth and so on, they all agree as we talked about the various names earlier. But when you look up Aboriginal or Aborigine, Aborigine is a person, animal, or plant that has been in a country or region from the earliest times. An Aboriginal inhabitant of Australia, 
American is what the aboriginals or copper colored races found here by the Europeans. This is from 1849, 1859, 1850, um, 1854, 1859 editions of Noah Webster's Dictionary. So the citizen in Alabama pro called blacks aborigines. Now, this is PBS, and they, they made this a real big stink about this. They're aborigines, but they're not Indians, Beeson replied, because the Indians came after the aborigines. The original aborigines that you've seen earlier, they had ancestry coming from Australia as the aborigines. They had, um, we just seen that they had the various blood type as well as also the various haplogroups that we look at, M, D, R, 1. Remember these. M174 or M. Remember D. Remember R as in R1. These are the three these are the various groups that we will show you and prove to you. Alright? We will continue on here. Um, Alabama State Senator refers to blacks as aborigines. Alright? While being recorded by the FBI wire attack. He made these interesting comments in reference to the blacks of Green County and Green Track Casino. His Republican friend says, that's y'all Indians. So they refer to us as Indians, but he said, that's y'all Indians. Former um, Rep. Benjamin Lewis said, he replies by saying, they're Aborigines, but they're not Indians, replied Beeson. He was there, made the apology. He had then made the apology for his remarks. Now let that sink in. Why would he have to apologize for saying that we have aboriginal? Well, here, let's search the term's meanings. Aboriginal, the first inhabitants pertaining to aborigines. Aborigin, um, aboriginary, an aboriginal inhabitant. Aborigine, the primary or primitive inhabitant of a country. So, people living in a country at the earliest period of which anything is known. The original fauna and flora of a given geographical area. Black, a member of one of the dark skinned races or dark colored races, a Negro or other dark skinned people or person. Black fellow, a black person, a Negro, an aboriginal inhabitant. Uh oh. Did someone just tell on themselves? So, we have dark skin as they refer to us as, okay? But as you see here, a black fellow is a black person, a Negro, an aboriginal inhabitant. Blackie, a black person, a Negro. Dark, darky, darky. A human being with dark colored skin. Now, I would hate for someone to try to call me a darky because I have dark colored skin, as they refer to it as. But they did have to say a human being. Why would they have to say a human being with dark colored skin is a darkie? Mm. I don't like that terminology, but these are, this is what this is showing here. Jen, an Australian native woman, an old woman generally, indigenous, born or originating in a particular place or country, native of indigenous origin or growth, not erotic of or, or of foreign origin or production belonging to birth. Nigga, oh, we know that one. A native of the West Indies or one of the Australian Aborigines of the West Indies, of the Caribbean Islands. These are the indigenous Aboriginal people that we also refer to. They notice they didn't say anything about Africa. Wow. And pick a name, a baby, a child, especially a child of a member of a of any Negro race. Hmm. Okay. So now we have Malcolm X, who helped wake me up at 12 years old, reading his autobiography, even though it was written by a sabotager known as Alex Haley. We still get the truth of the matter. Black man's history, Malcolm X, 
edited by Imam Benjamin Kareem, known as Benjamin X. You can listen to his speech on Malcolm X, a research site, December 1962. He says, these people who was here before Adam, and he always referred to these people as aborigines, which means what? Black folks. You never find a white aborigine. Aborigines are called natives, and they're always dark-skinned people. You and I are aborigines, but you don't like to be called an aborigine. You want to be called an American, or in this case, you want to be called a United States citizen. I don't have a problem with being called an American. Aborigines actually mean from the beginning. It's two Latin words, ab, meaning from, origin, meaning the beginning. And aborigine is only the term applied to those dark-skinned people who have been on this earth since the beginning of the universe. You know, that's going way back. What do you mean since the beginning of the universe? Well, we won't get into that topic tonight. But here, thanks to Felix Emanuel, this is from Jed Match, archaic matches for DNA. Now, you cannot see it, so I'm going to have to blow it up a little bit here. All right, here we go. This is matching my DNA, as you see here. This is Covis, Montana. And as you see, 12,500,000 years ago. 12,500 years ago. We was here. My ancestors was here in the Americas over 12,500 years ago. This is one genetic match in which that was found. So this kills the noise about, once again, we're not being, that we're not indigenous to this land mass. Obviously, this is not true. How else could I have 12,500-year-old ancestry in the Americas. This is in Montana. My ancestors connected to someone who died in Montana? 12,500 years ago? We're here. KY, as we've seen, means thousands of years. So 12.5 KY equals that person lived 12,500 years ago. Traditions? One population might already have adopted Mississippian culture, but the neighbors have not. Since the cultural, cultural traditions do not defy strict chronicle or chronological periods, anthropologists prefers to use a distinct set of terms for the, the, chrono, the chronology a chronology of the region. Now look, it says Paleo Indian before 8000 BC. Well, hold up. Uh, I just proved that I got DNA that spans back to the COVID. Not COVID, but COVID. 12,500 years ago. That is. Before white, the Paleo Indians. Before the Paleo Indians, this is us, the Paleo Indians. This is before 8000 BC. So we're talking about 12,500 years ago. Okay, that's the proof. That's one of the pros. We, we still, and so here, get the book if you want to know about more about the COVID. Don't come at me as a troll on any timeline because I will diss you. So we see now COVID on the edge of a new understanding. This is by Ashley M. Smallwood and Thomas A. Jen Jennings. You want to know about the COVID? Well, we find 
the first black Native Americans, several types of blacks into the Americas, including the who? The Khoisan, the Anu, or Negrito type, and the proto um, Saharan variety of blacks. Up until recently, it was believed that the first humans crossed the Bering Strait 12,000 BP, all right, or before Christ or before this particular so-called New Age or period, to enter the North American continent. So as you've seen, uh, 12,500 years ago, we talked about, this is what they're talking about, the first humans who, create, who crossed the Bering Strait, the Paleo-Americans. This is what they said, but we was actually already here prior to that. So that wasn't even the oldest ancestry that we can go off of. This view was never accepted by physical anthropologists who have found skeleton remains, all right? And here are the skeleton remains. You have Naya, you have the first European, and you have Lucia. These are the Paleo-Americans and the first Europeans, older than 12,000 B.C. So today archaeologists have found sites from Canada to Chile. Now remember, these are the same areas in which that um, I have ancestry from. The region between 20,000 and 40,000 years old. In Brazil, evidence of Africans dated back 100,000 years. What? 100,000 years. What? 100,000 years. There are numerous sites in North and South America which are over 35,000 years old. The sites are the Old Crow Basin, which is 38,000 BC, which is now 40,000 years old, in Canada. All right, the Oro Grand Cave, 36,000 BC, which is 38,000 years ago. In the United States, all right, and Pedra. Purada, 45,000 B.C., which is 47,000 years ago. Given the fact that the earliest dates for habitation of the American continent occurs before or below Canada in South America is highly subjective of the fact that the earliest settlers on the American continent came from Africa before the ice melted at the Bering Strait and move west northward as the ice melted. Okay. We have the appearance of the pebble stones or tools, excuse me, at Mont Verdes in Chile, thirty five oh, excuse me, thirty two thousand B B C or B P, which is thirty four thousand years ago, and rock paintings at Pedra um, um, Ferranda in Brazil, 22,000 BP, 30, this is 24,000 years ago, and Macedon hunting in Venezuela and Colombia, 13,000 BP, all right, which the ancestry in which that they calculate range to around that time period have led some researchers to believe that the Americas was first settled from South America. All right? C. Vance Hayman notes that if people had been in South America for over 30,000 years or even 20,000 years, why are these so few sites? Well, one possibility or one possible answer is that they were so few in number. Another is that South America was somehow initially populated from the directions other than north until the Cobus appeared. In other words, the Cobus.
So I have at least the DNA of the COVID 12,500 years ago, Montana. So we know that we've been here at least that long DNA-wise. All right, at least that long. Of course, I've proven already that we've been here much longer than that through the various books. All right. Get this book, We Are Not Just Africans, The Black Native Americans by Clyde Winters. Get this book, Covis, On the Edge of a New Understanding. If you not if you do not read these books, do not comment to anything which I say. Unless you read first and get a clear understanding of what we're talking about here. This is the problem. People are always discussing and trying to debate something in which they, they, have it, they have not even read the first book. And Bobby used to say, he who reads one book don't know, knows none. <laughs> okay? So, um, here we are again. We're going to come down. The oldest skeleton remains found in America are of blacks. Marquise, 1956, observed that it is good to report that long ago the useful America was also a Negro continent. I've spoken about that many times before. Um, noted that as early as 70,000 B.C., that is 72,000 years ago, Australoids and later Negrito crossed the Barren Strait to reach the New World. All right? Well, before then, actually... Uh, they, matter of fact, they didn't even have to cross the Barren Strait. His dates for these early blacks crossing the Barren is far er too earlier, or far too early, because the ice made it impossible to cross from Asia to North America until at least 12,000 to 15,000 years ago. That means that the blacks had to come directly from Africa and Europe to settle the Americans. And Landon notes that there is a possibility, a possible movement of Negrito from Ecuador into the Pyrura Valley, north of um, Chicama and Vera in early times. In the 1970s in Brazil, an interesting skull of a girl was found. This skull was reconstructed and dated back to 12,000 B.C., all right, 14,000 years ago, technically. Dr. Walter Neves, professor of biological anthropology at the University of San Pedro, um, after reconstructing the Lucia skull, found this um, personage was either African or Pacific Island type, in other words, Australian. As a recent anthropologist found the skull of another black girl dated to this period, they named her Naila, Naila. Anaia and Lucia dates back to 12,000 B.C. were Negroes. This is a um, picture of her. Anthropologists had reconstructed the face of ancient Americans from Brazil to Mexico. These faces are based on the skeleton remains dated back to 12,000 B.C. So here is Lucia here to the left. Researchers working on this ancient people notes that they resemble Negroes instead of com um, contemporary Native Americans. All right, so we are the oldest people, regardless on how we got here, we was here. Whether we crossed the Barren Straits, which <clears throat> we already just proved that that didn't happen, we sailed on boats here, we came here. In the Smithsonian Magazine, Dr. Um, Chatter, um, and before I even get to that, some say that we was already here because before the continental drift occurred, all right? That's another story, but we was here. That's what we do know. In the Smithsonian Magazine, Dr. Chatter was found, Naya um, Skeleton notes that the small number of early American specimens discovered so far have smaller and shorter faces and longer and narrower um, skulls than the um, later Native Americans, most closely resembling the moderate people of Africa, Australia, and the South Pacific. This has led to speculation that perhaps the first Americans and Native Americans came from different homelands. 
All right. Well, amazingly, they didn't never speak of those who was already here because that is a little bit too much for um, academia. <laughs> okay? That is just a little bit too much for academia. All right, so um, let's, let's, let's go back up. All right, so let's look into the DNA now and verify what we're talking about. Since history has already complemented genetics and vice versa, all right? It's already been proven 17% Lumbee, North Carolina, Let's see what else we find here. But so that's just one aspect of DNA. So, in the book, or DNA, uh, uh, I should say, encyclopedia, an encyclopedic reference book documenting the global presence of the ancient indigenous black Moors. All right? We go here. We come down the moors of Morty of Pacific, New Zealand, and Australia. Boom. That's what we just talked about. The moors in Polynesia, Malaysia, and Micronesia. And then the African moors, founder of the indigenous civilization of America. Okay. So, if you want to read more, you can get the book. On the basis of comprehensive RFLP analysis it has been inferred, inferred that 97% of Native Americans' mitochondrial DNAs belong to one of the four major founding, all right, one of the four, all right, major founding mitochondrial DNA lineages designated as haplogroup A through D. Remember this. Remember this. This is very important. All right, very important to remember. So, as you see, haplogroups A through D. All right, so 90% of Native Americans have mitochondrial DNA. Uh, met DNAs belonging to one, just one, of four major founding mitochondrial DNA lineages, designated haplogroups A through D. It has been proposed that a fifth mitochondrial DNA exists too. Okay, well, let's find out what they are. All right? Now, this is my full mitochondrial DNA breakdown, N, which is 2.77%, N. Let's see what N is. Mitochondrial, or haplogroup, excuse me, mitochondrial DNA. We read the article, and we look at the origin. I'm not going to read everything, but definitely got to get it in. Haplogroup A is believed to have arised in Asia some 30,000 to 50,000 years before present. It's an it's ancestral haplo was haplo group N. So A came from N. All right. However, the extent diversity of mitochondrial genome that belongs to haplo group A is low relative to the degree of diver, divergence from its nearest outgroups in haplo N, which suggests that extend members of haplogroup A might be descended from a population that has emerged from a bottleneck approximately 20,000 years ago. I'll leave you all to look up bottleneck. Its highest frequency are among who? Native Americans. 
its largest overall population is in East Asia. And its greatest variety, which suggests its origin point, is in East Asia. Thus, it might have originated in and spread it from the Far East. All right. Continue on. Haplogroup A is the largest Native American haplogroup. More than 43% of the individuals who carry Native American mitochondrial DNA falls into a subgroup of A. Like the other Native American haplogroups, the base haplogroup was formed in Asia. Well, I remember we was called Asiatics. But this is the reason why. Haplogroup A is the largest Native American haplogroup. 43% or actually 44%. Just round that off. American. All right? So more than 47% of the individuals who carry Native American mitochondrial DNA falls into a subgroup of A. Like the other Native American haplogroups, the base haplogroup was formed in Asia. Once again. Oh, there's my A. A0, which is 0.42%. At least this is what um, genome, genome link states. A1, 6.80%. So my haplogroup A comes to 7.22%. So more than 7% of my DNA. I also got B. Oh, 0.85%. Remember, A through D. So A, B, C, D. Oh, I got C. 7.5% C. This is haplogroup D. Uh oh, 9.44%. So what is haplo-D? It's a human mitochondrial haplo, um, DNA haplogroup. It is descended haplogroup of haplo-M. So remember, we showed you M and D was those who was here in the Americas who dated, who dated according to Albert Goodyear, dated back to more than 50,000 years ago. Remember that? I showed you all that. So here it is. I have D, and it says that it's descended from the haplogroup M, through he has arisen somewhere in Asia between roughly 60,000 to 35,000 years ago, All right? In the late Pleistocene, before the last glacial maximum and the settlement of the Americas. In contemporary population, it is found especially in Central and Northeast Asia. Haplo D, more specifically, subclad D4, is one of the five main haplogroups found in the indigenous people of the Americas. The others being A, B, C, and X. Well, goddamn, I got all of them. And I'm pretty sure you do too. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so interested in this information. This is why you have to get it done. So, Haplo group X is a human mitochondrial DNA haplogroup. It is found in America, Europe, Western Asia, North Africa, and the Horn of Africa. All right, we come down. Uh oh, it is also associated with the Kennewick man, Washington State. All right, and an ancient ancestor of the tribes of who? With the Salish, the Cree, and the um, Sioux nations. Uh oh, the Cree, the Cree. Remember that, the Cree. But we're looking at now at the X chromosome, 0.83%. So when you tie all of that together, indigenous North American haplogroups, A, B, C, D, X, equals 25.84% or 26%. So this is how you find out how much American that you really are. So I have all the haplogroups, A, B, C, D, X, of the indigenous North Americans, as well as haplogroup Q, which is the haplogroup of the indigenous South Americans. Uh-oh. So now, the first people in of South America, new evidence for Y chromosome 
alkyl group Q. Let's look at it. It says here, uh, more than 400 Native Americans, Y chromosomes collected in the region ranging from Mexico to South America, belonging to the haplogroup Q, virtually the only branch of the Y phalangine um, observed in modern day Amerindians of Central and South America. Together with 27 from Mongolian and Kanchaka, two main founding lineages, Q1A, 3A, 1A, dash M3, and Q1A, 3A1, dash L53, L54, in parentheses XM3, are detected along the novel subclad clad of younger age and more restricted geographic distribution. So, here it is. Q, 13.8%. Okay. Mm. That's quite a bit. So, indigenous South American Y DNA Q haplogroup 13.8 or 14 percent. So we're looking at 26 percent, and we're looking at 14 percent. That's 40 percent. But they're not going to allow for you to understand that. Because they want you to be predominantly African. So you have to learn how to read between the lines. So that means I'm 40% American. But we continue on. See, this is the trick that they've been pulling on us the whole time. Even through the DNA test. So here, they'll tell me at another site, though, that I'm 7% South American. Well, we just finished seeing that actually it was nearly 10%. Actually, more than 10% is 13.8%, 14%. But here, it gives me only half of that. See, this way you have to have more sites that you run your DNA makeup through. But here, as you see, South American, 7%. Native American, American Indian, 7%. That would be my ancestry. This is what they give. But we see that it actually is double that. And they didn't even add in this, the South Amer the um, North American ancestry part. They only did the South American ancestry part, as you see here. So see, they, they try to make sure that you're not connected to North America, but... I got a way around that, as I showed you. This is why you need history. People are going to ask me stupid-ass questions within my timeline um, and posts when I do videos on these subjects. And what is this going to do for me? Nothing, you dumbass. It ain't going to do anything for you. Because you don't know how to work the magic. For me, this is going to help us be free. Because we know that there's a hidden history that's been going on here. And so for people to just refer to me as black, which is simply a color, a crayon color in that, which is a adjective, and, a, and, and you know, when I'm showing that I am Native American, 
that I'm indigenous, aboriginal to this landmass, through DNA, what can they do? Except you nig on that word black. And I'm using the word more to collectively tie it all in. Okay? We use the word more to collectively tie it all in. So this is 23 and me. And they show the same thing. If you notice, look at my North American, North Amer Native American ancestry. You see Peru, which is a lot in that yellow. You see even part of Brazil. You see Argentina. You see a lot of Mexico. You see Belize. You see even Puerto Rico. This is 23 and me. So yes, I might look like a Negro or black or colored, but my ancestry tell me that I'm indigenous to this land mass. And there's no denying it now. This is verification. So not just North America, Central America, but South America also. And the adjoining islands. Because Puerto Rico is in the Caribbean. So when the Empress spoke about the fact that her ancestry is not just the so-called black Europeans that came here and set up of the royal lineage of the Habsburgs and Luxembourg, Sweden, Switzerland. That's part of my ancestry also, as I've already proved in that part. These royal lineages from Europe which actually came from stem from out of Africa, in particular Egypt, as I've already gone over that information too, coming from Ramesses the third, his grandfather, Ramesses the second, on into down into the eighteen dynastic period of King Tut, which I haven't done um my presentation on that as of yet. That will be another class. How I'm related to them too. And I'm showing you all, all these relationships because you have the same thing in your DNA. I'm pretty sure of it. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so interested in finding this information out. So when people say, what is this going to do for me? Nothing for you. <laughs> as as Pentagon as you say, no, cult, no kutalini for you. No kutalini for you niggas. No, no, no. You... You know Kotalini for your niggas. <laughs> Dr. Ali. Yes. In the search for when I did the ancestral dot com, I have this a Montana Clovis. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the point. And I'm gonna show you also the Kinosaur and the Kinnerick, excuse me, um connection in a second here. So, this ties us right back to, once again, the Americas. And remember, I showed you that I also had connection to Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. And where are you from? Trinidad and Tobago. Exactly. I'm the, uh, so, and, and, and you also said, you also, me and you spoke before, um, Brother Joff, um, that uh, you have Washington in your family line. So that shows you that this is all connected. This is DNA. This really? is DNA. Yes. Uh, what if I use like the more? Uh, you think it's all right for me to use like uh, the Mormon? Uh, the Mormons runs twenty three and Me, which is the largest database. Well, actually, not 23 me for Ancestry. They run Ancestry.com, which is the largest database system. Okay, okay. You know, so um, I've gone through, many, through several of these um, DNA sites gathering information because they're going to tell you something different or something more than the other one. So now you take all these, all this documentation and you put together an autobiography for yourself. Okay, 
to show who you actually are, proven through history, through DNA, that you're not just black, Negro, and color. You have nationalities. Okay. The word more is a collective is a collective word for your nationalities, your various American nationalities, and your European nationalities, and your African nationalities. That's what the that's what more is for. Is to combine all these various nationalities. So now you can prove you can prove who you are now through DNA. This this is something in which that you would want to add to your documentation, as I spoke about before. Mm-hmm. So it is okay to use a warm enough source. I mean, yes. them. Yes. Uh, yes. Just stay away from Henry Louis Gates Jr., huh? Right, just stay away from his ass, his black ass, his black European ass, as, as he loved to, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So here, right. Nova America, in the world is New America, the genetic landscape of the Americas was dramatically altered over the past 500 years, following waves of integration from from Europe, Africa, and Asia. Millions of indigenous Americans perish as a result of exposure to disease and genocides at the hands of European colonialists or uh, colonizers. But the genetic legacy of this early Americans persists to this day. Extensive mixing of historical populations called admixtures, results in a new admixture genetic and cultural identities that defines the people of the Americas today. So, as you see here, even 23andMe has identified these mixtures, and you see a large part of it um, is here within the Americas. We get down to the first Americans, and this is what they're talking about, the Central Asia, 30,000 years ago, isolation, isolated in the Bering Strait, 25,000, 15,000 years ago, on down into the migration into the south. This is what they keep pumping, but as we have already proven, that's not the case. Okay, indigenous American. Alim, you suggest that the 0.2% of your ancestry is indigenous American. Actually, as we already seen, is way much more than that. And this is the website. This is 23andMe. So 23andMe is attempting to de- is is to um, lessen your indigenous heritage. All right. Well, Anthro um, is a DNA site in which that is promoting it in, in this and showing more connections and, and a higher level of the ancestry. This is his, this 0.2% of your ancestry. Now, now I brought up the word Cree because the Kennesaw, the Kennewick man um, that they found in Montana, or was, well, not Montana, that's COVID man, and they found the Kennewick. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find um, the Kennewick before we get to that. Uh, Bear with me for a second here, y'all. Let me find it. Because the COVID, COVID um, is older. Here it, all right, here it is. Uh, Let me blow it up so I'm here. All right, so. All right. So here you have the Kennewick, United States, 8,300 years ago. Now, 12,500 years ago and 8,000, 3,000 years ago is way before 500 years ago. And they keep trying to just tie us back to as being slaves. Obviously, I wasn't a slave 8,300 years ago. 
obviously I wasn't a slave 12,500 years ago. I'm talking about my ancestors. So, there is something wrong with them referring to us as slaves now, because this is where they want to keep our mentality at, is caught up into slavery. That's a form of mind control, technology as we, as we refer to it as. So here it is, thousands of years ago, 8,000 or 8.3 KY means that person lived 8,300 years ago. So I have this also in my ancestry, the Kennewick. So we talked about the Cree, all right? C-R-E-E, -E. the Cree is Native American, all right? It's Native American. Now, now, we talked about the Kennewick and I showed the people in of my ancestry of A, B, C, D, and X, as well as Q. So A, B, C, D, X is all North American ancestry, which I have, and Q is predominantly the ancestry or haplogroup of South America. We've already shown that. So here it is, once again, it says haplogroup X, all right, is connected to who? Look in the yellow. It says what? The Kennewick man, Washington State, and ancient ancestors of tribes with Salish, Cree, and Sioux nations. So that means I'm related to if I if you got the Kennewick man ancestry eight thousand three hundred years ago. That means that you related to who? The Salish, the Cree. And the Sioux Nations as well. You get it? North American ancestry. All right, so here, let's look at it. I had a good friend of mine, my brother hit me up. All right, here he is. All right, this is. Brother um, Akaku, all right, and he's from the Cree tribes. Ain't this a damn coincidence? <laughs> he hit me up about a month ago, and um, he seen the video that I did, and he said he agreed with it 100%. Now, here he is as part of the Cree, and I got DNA in which that established the Cree tribes. The haplogroup X, as well as also haplogroup A. So here he is. He talks about it. So check this out. All right. He said, I have haplogroup A, and it came from the Middle East of Africa 275,000 years ago. Now, hold on a second, y'all. But read that right here and check it out.
Correct. So, I'm showing you how to use your DNA test kits as well as verifying it through history. But here it is, a calculus. He states his haplogroup is A. Now, remember, I showed you my haplogroup is also A. I have actually two placements of A haplogroup. A1, which is 6.880% or 7%, and 0.42%. All right, so that together came to 7.22 percent. All right, so this is what he writes. He said, with my DNA test, I have African ancestry, bro. I did it all came with my spit, for my spit. <laughs> In other words, he spit it into a tube. Right here, haplogroup L, you also have maternal haplogroup L, which is also my line, is haplogroup L. All right? But his haplogroup um, A is Y DNA. This is paternal. This is the um, father line. His mother line, maternal line, is L. Mine is L. All right, his is A. So he explains A, haplogroup A, Y DNA, haplogroup A, possibly time of origin, roughly 270,000 years ago, or about 275,000 years ago, or 303,000 years ago to 241,000 years ago, or estimated. 291,000 years ago. All right, possible origin is possibly West or Central Africa. So, the A bloodline or me, haplogroup, the A haplogroup originally came from Africa. He said, but my mom said that she knew I had African ancestry of some sort because of my father's side. <laughs> but his father, now? this is one of my friends. So, um, he, if, yeah, if, yeah, on Facebook, if you see him, he's, he's Cree. He's from the Cree tribe, and he looks like a... Uh, Native American, as they would say, um, that we've been um, conditioned to look at. You know, the slanted eyes, um, the long hair, straight hair. He's Cree. So, but he's telling you as being Cree that he has 21% to 22% African DNA. Here it is. On genome link, I have 22% African. Uh-oh. DNA. Now look at him. Wow. Look at him. What does he look like to y'all? What would he be considered? He'd be considered Native American. Well, he, wrong, huh? well he's mixed. Just like oh, a mixed. lot of us are. He's mixed. Yeah, I agree with that. No, yeah, no, yeah. Right. And he just finished saying that he has 22% African DNA. So see, this is the trick that has been used in order to remove us from our position as the first Americans. And he states specifically that, yo, bro, everything that you said in the video, he said, right, he said, 
Oh man, it's top sick. I watched your video and you were right, man, cause indigenous people don't even like to be called indigenous cause it was colonials that named us these names. We have our own names, bro. And not only that, um, in our DNA, I have haplogroup A, and it came from the Middle East or Africa 275,000 years ago. So, he looks Native American, but he has blood type and haplogroup from A from 275,000 years ago. Which shows you that it's an African bloodline, an African DNA. Why DNA is that? Paternal DNA. So, I wanted to show you all that because this verifies it. And this is what he showed me, his genetic, um, his global ancestry link. All right? And he has people, um, native people of the Andes, 12%. Well, I have um, native people of the Andes, as I showed you. You have native people of the Amazon and Caribbean, 10%. I have native people of the Amazon and Caribbean. Okay? He has 21% or 22% West African. And he has Balkan, 24%. Now, what's Balkan? What's Balkan? Somebody look up Balkan for me. Anybody know what Balkan is? Let's find out. B-A-L-K-N. Balkan. Balkans. Uh-oh, also known as the Balkan Peninsula, is a ge geographical area in Southeast Europe with various geographical and historical definition. Okay, let's look at the Balkans. Okay, bam. Balkans, known as the Balkan Peninsula, is a geographical area in Southeast Europe with various geographical and historical definitions. The region takes its name from the Balkan Mountains that stretch throughout the whole of Bulgaria. Bulgaria? Bulgaria. So, right here, this is Bulgaria. You see? This, this area right here, Bulgaria. Right above Greece. So, Native Americans have Bulgarian or Greece blood? Turks? Uh oh. Bulgaria. Because if you notice, what did you see? Let's look it up. That is the largest percentage of his ancestry, is Balkan. How did that get here? Eastern Europe. Hmm. Right. Most frequent oh. ethnicity is 24% Balkan, which is Bulgaria, above Greece. Okay. But he has 21% to 22%, he said, um, right here. West African, and of course, native people of Andes, 12%. Native people of Amazon and Caribbean, 10%. Hmm. All right. So... All right, so what's going to be seen, the haplogroup A, 
0.42%, A1, 6.80%, once again, 7.22 percentage. B, 0.85%, C, 7.5%, D, 9.44%, X, 0.83%, Q, 9.44%, which is 10%, or oh, damn near 10%. All right. As you see here, South American 7%. The Andes, once again, uh, let's come on down and continue seeing the information here. So I don't have any bulking. All right. Um, if I did, I guess I would probably look similar to him. You know, but I don't have any bulking um, in my ancestry. All right, so here um, we've got the native people of the Andes, 2%. Um, right here, you got 3% people of the Amazon and Caribbean. Um, allegedly 1% Native American, as I already showed you, that was false. Um, it's, we talk about almost up to 14%. Um, actually, more than that. Um, but here, the indigenous... Now check this out. This is this is where you find the real information at. Cause what they did not make mention of is the all one. So it's not just five, it's actually six. Indigenous Afro American DNA is haplogroup all one. I'm gonna say that again. Indigenous Afro American, in other words, indigenous Moors, DNA is haplogroup R one. Dr. Clyde Winner states that indigenous Moors, so-called blacks, African-Americans, haplogroup is all one. Indigenous Moors, haplogroup is all one. So, I showed you that I have A, B, C, D, X, and Q. Now let's get to the main juice of the shit because this goes back more than just 12, 8,300 years ago, which is the um, Kennewick man. It goes further back than just the 12,500 years ago, which is the Covis man. Man. This is the indigenous man now, okay? Indigenous Afro-Americans DNA is haplogroup R1. So let's look at it. R1. But how did R1 get into Europe? In Asia, in um, in Asia, and America, we came through the Kushite spread. You see this? This is current research, Journal of Biological Science. You don't want to believe me? Call the numbers. Uh, put in the numbers, I should say. Read the article. Put in the numbers. All right. So the Kushite spread of haplogroup R1 dash M173. From Africa to your Asia, Clyde A. Winters. All right? So, let's read. This is Dr. Winters, and he's breaking it down. Archaeogeneticists is the use of genetics, archaeology, and linguistics. This is everything that we're using here today to explain and discuss the origin and the spread of Homo sapiens sapiens. In this paper, we will use... Um, archaeogenetics genetics to determine and discuss to examine and discuss the spread of haplogroup R dash M one seven three by the ancient Kushites. Researchers have outlined two possibilities out of Africa events in the past forty thousand years. Although these out of Africa events occurred during prehistoric, the um, classical writers of Greece and Rome discuss a recent migration of people from Africa into Eurasia. This African population was called Kushite. So we are Nubians, y'all. Or Nuba, also referred to, because they don't really like that word, Tennesseans. All right? So as you see, the R1, let's, let's get down for you. We can see it. R1 or R, 0.83%. 
all one A twenty two point nine percent, which is twenty three percent, and all one B nine point three six percent. So now the all one haplogroup in my DNA is approximately thirty three percent, and overall the R haplogroup is thirty five percent total. Now if I add the thirty five percent to the forty percent. <laughs> What you get? Remember, because we just tallied up the indigenous portion. A, B, C, D, X. Now, with the Q. Now, with the indigenous American from the Moors. Now, we talk about over 70%. All right? Once again, this is almost 30, this is 35 percent. Let's go back up. See, this is how you verify who you are. These are the tricks in which that has been done. In addition to South American, haplogroup is 13.8 percent. In other words, 14 percent. Okay. Are y'all getting this? Y'all seeing how this all ties together? And how we've been lied to? Right here, indigenous North American haplogroups A, B, C, D, and X, when you collectively add it all together, came to 26%. All right? 26% plus 13 well, 14%. So 26% and 14% is how much, y'all? It's 40%. So 40% indigenous, uh, uh, Native American as they refer to it as, and here it is the indigenous part of the Moorish part, and that comes to 35%. So 35 and 40 is 75 percent. Seventy-five percent indigenous. Mm, okay. I know is. See, it's time to tally this shit up so we can get. Some fantastic understanding here because we've been lied to for so long that all we know how to do is accept the lies. All right? So let me continue on here. We continue on. Get the book. If you don't know about the, the um, right here. Why a spectacular? New find is changing our understanding of the people in other Americas. Ancient encounters, the Kennewick man, and the first Americans. Well, we're from the first Americans. They just said that the Kennewick man and the first Americans by James C. Chatters. The Kennewick man. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Because we just proved that we had the Kennewick man. Because I just showed you right here. Well, there it is. F99970 Kennewick, United States, 8,300 years ago. It's in my blood. Hmm. And it's in yours too, I'm sure. You see, the reason why I feel different information, because here it is. MDLP K11 moderate admixture portions. You have American Indian. This is 22 strands of DNA. And 1.6%, 0.5%, um, this is um, 2 and 3, 
and then 1.3 percent on five, 0 0.7 percent on seven, uh, 3.7 percent on nine, uh, 1.0 percent on twelve. 5.6 percent on 14, 0 0.7 percent on 15, and 8.3 percent on 22. Now, if we go to the Eurogene K13 admixture portion, it comes up. See, all of this have different things. So this is how you're able to get different information concerning who you actually are. Two, 0 0.8 percent, five, 1.2 percent. 6, 1.2%, 7, 2.0%, 12, 1.5%, 13, 1.7%, 14, 3.3%, 15, 0.2%, 16, 0.7%, and 22, 4.5%. So as you see, you have different admixture from the MDLP than you do from the Eurogene. See, this is why we get different results. And see, this information comes from JetMatch DNA. So here we have the Punt DNL K10 ancient admixture portion, American Indian. 6, 0 0.4%, 9, 1.1%, and 22, 7.6%. Then you have the Haropa. World admixture portion. One, 0 0.6%, five, 0 0.6%, nine, 0 0.6%, 14, 2.8%, 15, 0 0.7%, and 22, 3.1%. So these are various calculations, different calculations. These are different models in which that is being utilized that was invented by different people, all right? And I'll show you what I mean. Let's go back up and read right here. MDLP K11, this K11 model of admixture waiting for description, all right? Eurogene K13 admixture portion. This utilized uses the Eurogene K13 model. All right, this was created in November 2013, created by um, David Siski, um, Polacco. Question and answers concerned about this model should be directed to him in his project blog. blog. All right? So these are different portions in which it is created. So sometimes this is why you have to go through different sites in order to get additional information because they're using these different programs. So here it is. Punt Denal, um, this calculation incorporates the newly discovered caucus, HG, as well as early Neolithic farmers in Western European HG. All right. So this is, they're not, this is for Europeans, West, Western Europeans. They're not going to focus on the United States. You see how they do this? The description about the components and the moderate Population at peak. So, given for more information about the uh, caucus um, HG, click here. Then you have the Haparapa on a Harappa um, rural admixture portion. This utilizes the Harappa rural model created by Zach. All right, who 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 the fuck is a Zach? Well, you got to <laughs> you got to look him up. All right, model should be directed to him at um, Haparapa. Um, um, Harappa um, at ZachVision.com or his Harappa World blog. We appreciate him making this excellent tool available here. All right, so these are various tools that they use to calculate who you are. And sometimes the shit isn't accurate because they are persistently focusing on Europe and different things like that. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So here we have Americas. America contain the following population cluster. Ameri Indian, Amazon Ameri Indian, and the Andes and Caribbean. Ameri Indians, Argentina and Chile. Ameri Indian, Central and South Mexico. Um, Ameri Indian, Central America. Ameri Indian, North America. Ameri Indian, North 
Mexico and the American Indians, Yucatan Peninsula. All right. All connected. Now check this out. This is what I've been telling you. All right. Frequency of the R1B subclad in North America. In North America. Frequency natives. What? Frequency is natives. Oh shit. Let's look at it. No, haplo group. American carries. Mm. Okay. I'll let you look at the numbers here. Let's read what he says. There was only mention of the fact that seventy six percent out of the excuse me, seventy six out of the seventy nine Native Americans are lineage chromosomes belong to R dash P two five. This represents seventy three percent of the Native American population analyzed in Moha Etel All right, two thousand and eight. So once again, there was only mention of the fact that seventy not six out of the seventy nine Native Americans or lineage chromosomes belong to R dash P two five. This represents seventy three percent of the Native American population. But goddamn if the Negroes isn't Native American, then how in the hell do the Native Americans have this R gene or DNA haplogroup? Well, we already talked about that. Indigenous Afro-Americans DNA is haplogroup R1. As we show, R1, A22.9, which is 23%. R1B, 9.36. All right, almost ten percent. So we talk about um, haplo R one is nearly thirty three percent of my DNA makeup. So once again, indigenous ship, and this is all before the Albion, the Europeans, because white skin developed in Europe only as recent as eight thousand years ago. Say anthropologists, you can go and see this on ancientorigins.net. Right? And also, LibertyWriterGlobal.com is to read the article in which that also states, Here, scientists now support Elisha Muhammad's story of creation of Caucasian race around 6,000 years ago. So this is all before the Albion came upon planet Earth in his present form. We was already in Europe, we was already in Asia, we was already in Australia, we was already in Africa, of course. We was already in North America, Central America, South America, the Pacific Islands, and the adjoining islands called the Caribbean. This is the truth of the matter. Please, someone try to debate me, I will eat you up with these facts. Once again, don't be a tool and come on my timeline attempting to say something derogatory. Black Indians are not solely a result of African slave mixing of red Indians as many would have you to believe. As I've already destroyed that mythology, that's a myth. Black Indians are indigenous to this land, as I've already proven, before the so-called red man. Before the Europeans, before the so-called Great Plain Indians, we, the Olmecs, the Washita, the Moors, the Yamasee, the Mound Builders, planted the seed of civilization in this country, America. Today, we are the remnants of these elders, and it is time we reveal the bigger picture, our true legacy, not as African slaves, not as immigrants, not as runaways, but as what we are and what we are, indigenous Washita Moors. I won't say Indians here. This is Robert Strong Rivers Williams, president of the Indians. Yes, president of the um, National Omec 
American Heritage and Research Committee. And plus, the emperor's already told us. She writes in her book, The Return of the Ancient Ones, that 85% of the blacks over here in America was already here before the slave trade. Only 15% of the blacks came from Africa. So kill that bullshit noise about we need to go back to Africa. As I've already proven, we was already here hundreds and thousands of years before anyone else. This is a fact. Take it or leave it alone, as Elijah Muhammad used to tell his people. Y'all can take it or leave it alone. All right, y'all. That's the end. Um, for, as in for um for class name, any questions concerning anything? Uh, yeah, uh, Darlene. Yes, God. Did Did you ever get my part one and part two of my book? No, I haven't gotten. Um, well, um, um, Kadira, um, changed the um, uh, um, the um, she had the mail to go to her mom and dad house. So there is mail and there is mail there. She just told me that today. So. I have to um I have to wait till I get back, brother. L. Right now I'm in Texas. Oh, you're not in Texas. Oh, right. you know I didn't know nothing about that. Uh, what happened uh, to your friend? I didn't know what, uh, that incident too. Uh, did they ever find out who did that? No, no. I, um, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, they already know who did it. It was five um, Caucasians who shot them. Do they have them in custody or? No, 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 not that I know of. Not that I've been told. Yeah, they shot him nine times, two in the buttocks, um, as if he was running away. And they took him out of the self-defense. How is the self-defense saying um, you get shot in your back? Wow. So I don't, I don't know why he. Why did he go with? You know, I, I don't know, man. Don't ask me, God. Um, trying to um, appeal to um, you know humanity. And sometimes humanity or mankind, in this sense, bites you back. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but I hope you find that book. I sent it to the address. Okay. Uh, um, well, I, um, Queen would call me and tell me, um, um, you know, when she looked through the mail and everything, what I have. Okay. Yeah. All right, then. Okay, God. I appreciate that, though. I'm going to definitely look at it. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Appreciate it when you do, brother. All right. All right. Um, any other questions before we go? Hey, Dr. Lane, this is Lanier. Hey, brother Lanier. Hey. Um, I was question about the um, reclamation information form I was trying to fill out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's asking for the, um, after the zip code, it's asking for the country. Um, yeah. What, what do I yeah, just put um, USA, um, lowercase U, yeah, lowercase U, um, um, SA. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't mm-hmm. sure about that. I didn't know if you wanted us to, to put that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I right, appreciate it. Yeah, you can also put the um, um, the said state in which that you domicile in or was conceived in. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. state of the country. So. Right, because right. those, those are actually the country. The United States technically isn't um, country. You know. Actually, I'll put that. I'll put mm-hmm. that in there instead. Then. Mm-hmm. Okay, I appreciate that. All right. Um, any other questions? No, that'll be it for now. Uh, God. Uh, all right. Appreciate appreciate you for this class. Oh, yeah, appreciate yeah. y'all listening and trying to put this information together. You know, it's time for us to get it all right, you know. Right. And, you know, as we showed um, in this class, we have proven that we are indigenous to the Americas. There's no doubt about oh, it. So um, <coughs> everybody saying otherwise uh, as, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm up. Right, exactly. All right, so I'm going to say hey, hi to you, wash to each, to everyone. Hey, hi to you, wash to each. And, um, hey, wash to each. And peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to you too, God. Peace.
Isso.